que he dicho Hamjambo. Our guest, my friend Tete Antonio, Minister for Foreign Affairs, who is representing my brother, the President of Angola, who is in Kenya as we talk. And he will be having a state visit tomorrow. Fellow leaders, the great people of Kericho, distinguished Kenyans, members of the diplomatic corps, guests, ladies and gentlemen, what were Kericho, Hamjambo Tena. Kericho Hamjambo. Kericho Chamge. Omune. Kericho Bwana Yesu Asifiwe. Kupinga Limie Awani Nione Ibi Watu wa Kericho. Asante ni sana. Mashuja Day is a celebration of the power of individuals to change the course of history and the destiny of a nation. It is a reminder that nations are driven forward and changed by individuals, ordinary men and women who believe they can make a difference and who believe they can change the status quo. The status quo in 1963 was a colonial state, the denial of basic freedoms and dignity. Deep inside many individuals then, they believed change was necessary and they took action. Individuals believe resulted in action and ultimate progress that made us the people we are today, an independent, democratic, progressive nation. Today, the status quo is a, hung is a hunger for socio-economic transformation, one that most of us feel is long overdue, and we are rightfully so. The need for heroism is, an urge is as urgent as it was in pre-independence Kenya. The power of individual action is still as powerful today as it was then. Our heroes today are on the farms, the markets, in factories, in offices, in construction sites, and in many other places. Our heroes are using their creativity to create content and shape culture. They are playing on fields, running on tracks, and working across many other fields. Every day, when we do our best, when we deploy our diligence, intellect, passion, creativity, hard work, and the sense of purpose, Every day that we believe we can make a difference, we are changing our country. This is our call to Ushuja, to the best of us, to, to be the best of us every day and to move our nation forward. This is why we are focused on empowering Kenyans to be at their best on diverse fields by democratizing and innovating government services to ensure that we give as many Kenyans as possible the opportunity to be their best so that they can move our country, our nation forward into a destiny that we all share as a people. The Constitution guarantees Kenyans the right to the highest standards of health. Since independence, successive governments 
have made efforts in guaranteeing access to quality and affordable health care for Kenyans, but with limited success. There have been several attempts and efforts to achieve universal health coverage, one in, 20, in 2003, in 2013, and in 2018. However, these efforts were met with little success. It is for this reason that the government of Kenya identified healthcare delivery as one of the core pillars of the bottom-up economic transformation agenda. In the Kenya Panza Manifesto, we made several commitments towards the delivery of universal health coverage. These include the provision of a fully public financed primary health care, the installation of a digital health management information system, and the setting up of a fund for improving health care facilities across Kenya. Other commitments were the setting up of an emergency medical treatment fund, the establishment of a national insurance fund that covers all Kenyans, and the availability of medical staff who deliver on this great universal health coverage that has been in the works for a long time. The government has instituted a paradigm shift to preventive and promotive health rather than where we've been at curative health. This approach also makes economic sense. Community health reports state that for every one shilling invested in community health, nine shillings and 40 cents are realized in economic and social gains in our society. In our plan, delivery of primary health services at community level will start with community health promoters. And we are very proud that they are represented in large numbers today in this very important Mashuja Day. <clears throat> the work of the promoters will include basic preventive and promotive health, health education, basic first aid for the treatment of minor injuries and ailments at household level and referral for facility-based health care. Each community health promoter is allocated 100 homes within their neighborhoods and this will happen countrywide. Considering the pivotal role played by community health in attainment of universal health coverage, the long-term financial viability and sustainability of community health is contingent on enhanced domestic resources for health. The national government is working closely with our county governments to strengthen the delivery of community health services through the payment of stipends for the 100,000 community health promoters. This will be done on a margin basis, 50% contributed by the national government and 50% contributed by the county governments. The national government has already allocated Kenya shillings 3 billion annually for payment of these stipends and it is my belief that counties will match up this fund so that we can enable these great heroes of our time to help us on the delivery of community health at the household level. It is worth noting that as of today, over one million households in 10 counties have been visited already by community health promoters, overt services, and their data captured in the Afya Nyumbani dashboard. 
and this is a significant major achievement as this dashboard is not only available to the Ministry of Health, it is also available in my office. We also agreed to provide the 100,000 community health promoters with kits which contain basic equipment for household health screening, medicines and supplies used for service provision at the household level. And as you can see today, every community health promoter here present, each one of them has a health promoter's kit. And that is the case with 100,000 community promoters everywhere in the Republic of Kenya. Quality community health data is essential for the planning, resource allocation, and monitoring of progress towards universal health coverage. The government is committed to delivering on the digital health agenda, starting from the community level. The community, the electronic community health information system, which is live and being used by the promoters across the country, is a symbol and user-friendly mobile health device being used and its application will be used to collect real-time accurate household data. It will also initiate planning for health service delivery and provide linkage to health facilities. Along the CHP kit the government has provided additionally 110,000 smartphones for use by the promoters and community health assistants. The shift from curative to preventive health will further be strengthened by the promotive services provided by community health promoters at the household units and integration of preventive services at the primary health care level. These services will include screening for hypertension, diabetes and high conditions, offer the necessary health education on water and sanitation, nutrition and provide community rehabilitation services, among others. These services will be provided through multidisciplinary teams that will be established at the level of the primary care networks. To strengthen the legal basis for health financing, health service provision and achievement of UHC, four new health laws, which I signed into law yesterday, have been enacted. These are the Community Health Insurance Act 2023, Primary Health Care Act 2023, Facility Improvement Act 2023, and Digital Health Act 2023. Health insurance coverage in Kenya is generally low at about 26% with those at the bottom of the economic pyramid having the least coverage at only 5%. Many Kenyans incur catastrophic expenditure from out-of-pocket healthcare payments, while many more do not seek care at all when they fall ill because they simply cannot afford it. Over the last decade, Several measures have been put in place to enhance the capacity of the National Hospital Insurance Fund to effectively deliver on its mandate. While these reforms and the initiatives therein have yielded significant progress, several gains and several gaps remain. Recent analysis show that among others, the NHIF operates as a passive 
rather than a strategic purchaser of healthcare. It is plagued by inefficiency and governance challenges and is potentially unless addressed financially unsustainable. It is against this backdrop that the government proposes a paradigm shift in the provision of social health insurance in the new Social Health Insurance Act 2023 that provides for formation of a social health authority which will repeal the current National Hospital Insurance Fund Act 1998. In our plan, I promise a fully publicly financed primary health care system, an emergency care fund and a health insurance fund that will cover all Kenyans. This promise is delivered through the enactment of the new Social Health Insurance Act, which among others establishes the publicly financed primary health care fund, a fully publicly financed chronic and emergency and critical illness fund, and the social health insurance fund, and access to healthcare from now henceforth will no longer be based on ability to pay, it will be based on the health needs of every Kenyan. We are implementing a per household payment system where a flat rate applies to everyone regardless of their income. Consider this for example. Previously, an individual earning 10,000 had to, had to pay Kenya shillings 500 for NHIF, a hefty 5% of their earnings. On the other hand, those with a salary of 100,000 or more contributed 1,700, a mere 1 1.7% of their income. Astonishingly, even someone with monthly income of Kenya shillings 1 million, like William Ruto, the president, paid the same amount of 1,700, which translates to a paltry 0.17% of their substantial earnings. This bizarre setup meant that low-income hunters, mamambogas, and border borders were effectively subsidizing high-income earners like myself. The Social Insurance Fund corrects this anomaly and makes sure that every citizen pays for health a percentage of their income, an equal percentage of their income, so that we can equalize the fortunes of every citizen with respect to access to health. The Social Health Insurance Fund also signifies a shift to increased use of domestic resources for health financing and a sustainable approach, especially at a time when resources from donors and development partners are dwindling. The healthcare system in Kenya is largely focused on curative services at the expense of preventive and promotive services. This has occasioned inequity in financing which has disadvantaged primary healthcare uptake and promotion. The government's mission is to build a progressive responsive, unsustainable healthcare system for accelerated attainment of the highest standard of health for all Kenyans. The funds allocated to public health facilities have substantially reduced over, over the years as they are directed to the county revenue fund and are rarely reinvested into the facilities. The lack of autonomy in public health facility management and financial control has led to increasing fragmentation, poor service delivery, 
deteriorating health outcomes, reduced efficiency, access, equity, financial risk protection, and also insignificant transparency and accountability. The Facility Improvement Financing Act corrects this situation and aims to structure the process and guide the counties on how to provide for retention, management, and use of revenue derived from health-related services rendered at public health facilities. The Act seeks to ensure a unified approach for health facility finance and management autonomy where public health facilities are able to retain their funds and have autonomy to operate their facilities based on their priorities. This will improve availability of resources at the facility to provide adequate and equitable quality health services, increase efficiency, and thus improve health outcomes for all Kenyans. Kenya has made significant strides towards digital transformation with many sectors leveraging on technology to enhance implementation of digital products and services. The health sector has made steady progress in digital technology transformation through implementation of digital solutions to manage and share and use data. However, the adoption of technology has been uncoordinated and characterized by fragmented implementation with health sector actors not adhering to basic digital health standards, guidelines, recommendations, and digital development principles. These technologies have affected low health data, how, low, how health data is managed, resulting in multiple systems that have limited ability to exchange data. The Kenya Panzer Manifesto identifies digitization as a pillar for the health sector to achieve universal health coverage. Accordingly, the Digital Health Act provides the legal basis for the development of a comprehensive and integrated health information system. These systems will enable end-to-end -end visibility of health processes and seamless sharing and portability of information that will enhance health service delivery and improve efficient use of resources. The enactment and implementation of the Act and the digitization agenda will deliver on the promise to integrate ICT to enhance telemedicine and health management information systems. Apart from the four laws, the Ministry of Health has put in place various policies and strategies to actualize strengthening of local manufacturing of health products and technologies to have at least 50% of medicines on the Kenya Essential Medical List produced locally ensuring procurement mechanisms guarantee value for money and provide advantage of economies of scale. Our mission is clear, to build a healthcare sector that is a shining example to the world with healthcare workers in the right numbers who are motivated, well supported and inspired to deliver their best. Together, we will ensure that every Kenyan has access to quality health services when they need it, regardless of their background or financial circumstances. I acknowledge the Ministry of Health, Safaricom, the World Health Organization, UNICEF, UN Program on HIV AIDS, and United Nations Population Fund, the Danish International Development Agency, the United States Government, the World Bank, Children Investment Fund Foundation, Academic Model Providing Access to Healthcare, Medic Mobile, 
U.S. President's Emergency for AIDS Relief, and AMREF, Kenya, among others, for their immense support. I request that we clap for this great partner of our healthcare delivery system. Kenyans have deliberately rejected ideas and programs that limit our productivity, waste our resources, and delay our takeoff. This is why our focus on effectively lowering the cost of living is based on increased agricultural productivity and expanding land and other resources for production. We have rolled out an agricultural support program that has provided farmers with access to fertilizer, affordable credit, and extension services. By end of July, we had distributed 3.5 million bags of region-specific crop fertilizers in 41 counties to registered farmers, working with county governments for last mile delivery. For the first time in Kenya, fertilizer was distributed on the basis of acreage and the crops that farmers produce via a digital e-voucher platform. The results of this program are evident across Kenya. We have placed over 200,000 acres under cultivation, which is more than last year. We are looking forward to a bountiful 44 million bags from the long rain season and 61 million bags overall for both seasons, marking an impressive increase of over 40% in relation to last year. <laughs> Fertilizer su support for the short range crop is now available at National Cereals and Produce Board depots for regions that planned in this season, including central Kenya, eastern and western parts of the country. I urge all unregistered farmers to use this opportunity to register so that they can benefit from the support of fertilizer for all their crops, whether it is tea, coffee, sugarcane, macadamia, avocados, and all the other crops that are engaged with our farmers. To reduce our national edible oil import bill, which currently stands at $1 billion annually, the government is supporting sunflower cultivation by distributing 600 metric tons of seed to farmers in partnership with counties in eastern and western Nyanza regions during these short rains. It is important that we are working with counties on other oil crops to deliberately reduce our import bill on oil and edible oil requirements for our country. When we came into office in September last year, only 320 government services were available online. Today, there are more than 13,000 services and we expect to onboard all services by the end of this year. This has increased efficiency. This has increased efficiency in service delivery, revenue collection, and enhanced accountability of government services and revenues. The government is currently rolling out the last mile 100 kilometer of fiber optic infrastructure throughout the country to improve health facilities, improve schools, judiciary offices in flood flung areas, and other public institutions. We are also concurrently setting up 25,000 Wi-Fi hotspots targeting fresh produce markets, bus parks, and other public spaces. We are also working with members of parliament in the setup 
of 1,450 ICT hubs in every ward in Kenya. And I am happy that the National Assembly has aligned the National Government Constituency Development Fund Act to actualize this strategic intent. Our goal is to spur e-commerce, the creative arts, and the digital economy, the frontier of our bottom-up economic transformation agenda. We continue to make significant progress in our education sector. Immediately after assuming office last year, we ended months of uncertainty by resolving that junior schools be domiciled in our primary school setup. We have reduced the teacher shortage by hiring more teachers. In last year, in the last one year, the Teacher Service Commission has recruited 56,000 teachers, which is half of the required number or half of the shortage that we have. This is the highest recruitment in the history of the Commission in one year and the largest such exercise in Kenya's history. We intend to close the gap on teacher shortage in the coming two years. Further, in keeping with government's policy to equip Kenyan youth with practical skills and competencies, we are working with our TVETs to ensure that another 2,000 TVET college tutors are hired to support our TVET education that has increased from 90,000 eight years ago to 350,000 currently. I am also happy to note that we have concluded with the government of China the supply of equipment for another 70 technical training colleges in Kenya that will ensure that more young people have access to gadgets and tools that will improve their acquisition of knowledge and skills to be able to be job ready as we march forward into the future. In a transformative shift, we unveiled a new funding model for higher education and technical and vocational training that guarantees needy students free college studies. The funding comprises government scholarship, government loans and bursaries, and household support. Through this model, we have raised the funding per student to by 40%, and we have now eliminated the tragic situation of many of our universities that were steeped in huge debts because of underfunding that had become the norm. Housing is a revolutionary agenda that will have an extensive impact across the economy. At scale, the affordable housing program will create jobs for our young people, expand the manufacturing of construction products and materials, and enhance economic activity across many sectors. The construction of 46,792 units is already underway, and another 40,000 units are ready to commence construction in the next few days. Architects, engineers, quantity surveyors, masons, electricians, plumbers, transporters, steel factory workers, cement factory workers, and hardware merchants will be engaged in this transformative construction housing enterprise to construct 200,000 housing units annually. The construction of one unit, for the record,
sits between three and five jobs directly and five to eight jobs indirectly. More jobs will be created with the formalization of the Juakali clusters that will provide products such as doors, windows, and hinges for this program. I stand before the people of Kenya to express my pride and admiration for all Kenyans who have risen up to the challenge of the moment, seized opportunities that came up as we deliver our commitments and implemented the bottom-up economic transformation agenda. These enterprising ethos, the hustling spirit, and the motivation to do your part in making this country move forward is all and it is heroic. Therefore, let us dedicate ourselves to nation-building endeavors, assured that as long as we are implementing the bottom-up economic transformation agenda, your government stands with you and will walk the road of growth and development with every Kenyan until we accomplish our purpose and fulfill our mission. Wacha niseme hivi kwa Kiswahili. Leo tumetumia Mashujaa Day ya mwaka huu kwa jambo la muhimu sana ambayo inahusu wa Kenya wote. Jambo la afya. Vile nimewaeleza tumekuwa tukitafuta mbinu jinsi na namna ya kuhakikisha ya kwamba afya inamfikia kila mkenya na afya isiwafikie wale wako na uwezo peke yao lakini ifikie kila mkenya kwa sababu maisha ya kila mkenya ni ya muhimu kwa wakenya wote na ndio tumesema tunabadilisha sheria jana niliweka sahihi sheria nne mpya ambayo itatumika kuendesha mambo ya afya ambayo itafikia wakenya wote katika taifa letu la Kenya tunaanza na hawa community health promoters hawa mashujaa wamekuwa wakifanya kazi ya afya kama volunteers kwa miaka nyingi na ndio tumesema tukienda mbele kwa sababu hawa community health promoters wamefanya kazi ya muhimu sasa tutawapatia vifaa jambo la pili tutahakikisha ya kwamba watapata malipo kwa kazi mzuri wanayofanya kwa afya katika taifa letu la Kenya na jambo la pili sheria mpya ambayo tumetengeneza itaturuhusu na itatupatia nafasi sote kama wa Kenya kuchangia kwa mambo ya afya nataka niwaeleze ndugu wa Kenya mambo matatu ya muhimu kwa hii mfumo mpya ya afya ambayo tunazindua leo ya kwanza pale katika level 1 2 and 3 dispensary na health center kila mkenya atapatiwa matibabu bila malipo yoyote na gharama ya matibabu katika hapo katika level 1 2 and 3 gharama yake italipiwa na serikali ya Kenya kupitia kwa ile fund ya primary health jambo la pili pale katika dispensary yako ya nyumbani na katika health center yako ya nyumbani sasa wa Kenya watajumuishwa katika usimamizi wa ile facility nyinyi katika kijiji yenu katika mtaa wenu nyinyi mtakuwa na kamati ya kushughulikia mambo ya afya katika dispensary yenu katika health center yenu ndio kama hakuna dawa nyinyi wenyewe 
mtashughulika mjue na mtupatie habari ya kwamba hakuna dawa katika hii hospitali ndio wa Kenya waweze kupata nafasi ya kupata afya katika mahali karibu pale nyumbani kwa sasa wa Kenya wengi wanaenda kwenye hospitali yenye iko mbali kwa sababu ile dispensary iko wapo karibu haina dawa haina wauguzi na haina service na ndio tunasema hivi sheria yetu ya pili ni kuhakikisha ya kwamba kila facility kila hospitali kila dispensary kila health center watakuwa na pesa zao na pesa ya facility yenu haitapelekwa katika facility ingine na haitapelekwa kufanya kazi ingine yoyote itatumika katika hiyo facility yenu ili pesa ambayo imewekwa katika budget ya facility yenu ya nyumbani nyinyi wenyewe kama wananchi mkisimamia na wauguzi na tumesema ya kwamba wananchi wenyewe wahuzishwe viongozi wa kanisa wahuzishwe viongozi wa serikali katika eh, kiwango hiyo wahusishwe na development partners pia watakuwa pale na hata watu wa civil society wakuwe pale ndio tuhakikishe ya kwamba hakuna wizi tena ya madawa katika mahospitali zetu katika dispensary zetu na katika health centers zetu vile vile wananchi wengi wakipata ajali wakipata hali ya dharura wakienda hospitali wanaambiwa wewe huna card wewe una uwezo wa kulipa sasa emergency chronic illness na ajali zote kila mwananchi atakubaliwa kutibiwa katika kila hospitali bila ya kuulizwa maswali kwa sababu maisha ya kila mwananchi ni ya muhimu wananchi wengi wananiuliza kwamba wale hawana uwezo wa kulipa NHIF ama wa kulipa sasa ile card ambayo ni ya social insurance fund itakuwaje wacha mimi nitangaze katika hafla hii ya kuzindua afya nyumbani kwamba kila mwananchi atali, atalipa kulingana na mapato yake na yule mwananchi ambaye hana uwezo serikali ya Kenya itakulipia card ya hospitali kila mkenya atakuwa na social insurance fund card na wewe utaenda hospitali na utatumia hiyo card either umejilipia mwenyewe ama umelipiwa na serikali ili uweze kupata matibabu katika level 4 level 5 and level 6 kwa hivyo kila mkenya either utaenda katika level 1 2 and 3 na upate matibabu bila malipo ama uende level 3 level 4 5 and 6 na utumie kadi yako kupata matibabu na kila mkenya ndio tumesema hakuna mkenya ataachwa nyuma ile maneno ya zamani wewe unaenda kwa facility ya, ya hospitali unaambiwa kadi yako imefika mwisho sasa hii kadi ambayo tutawapatia haitakuwa na mwisho kwa sababu maisha ya kila mkenya ni ya muhimu that card will make sure that if the limit is reached then the chronic and illness fund will kick in and every kenyan will be attended to hakuna mkenya atafukuzwa hospitalini kwa sababu ya mambo ya malipo tena tunataka tuhakikishe kwamba kazi hiyo inafanyika in conclusion allow me to celebrate kibrugut chumo the first kenyan to win an olympic medal the first to win an olympic medal by renaming 
this Kericho Green Stadium after him. I think he deserves it. Let me also say, for the people of Kericho, thank you very much kwa kutukaribisha katika mji wenu wa Kericho. Kwa niaba yangu, wacha mimi nirudie. Kwa niaba yangu na sote tuliokuja hapa kuomba kura zenu. Deputy wangu akiwa hapa, viongozi wale wengine wote wakiwa hapa. Kwa watu wa Kericho tunawaambia asanteni sana kwa kura zenu. Watu wa Kericho narudia asanteni sana kwa kura zenu. Kwa Kericho wale hii wale mungu mwingine jambo la pili hapa kericho mimi niliwaeleza pale mbele ya kwamba mchi wa kericho hauna ardhi ya kufanya extension hapa kericho imesongamana sana hii kericho town ni town ndogo kwa sababu hakuna expansion program mimi nataka nitangaze ya kwamba nitarudi hapa mwezi ujao kwa sababu ile ardhi ya kari elfu moja ambayo ilikuwa na matatizo hapa hiyo matatizo yote sasa tumetatua kama serikali ya Kenya na sasa tutapata shamba ekari elfu moja ya expansion development planning ya Kericho Town na wale wananchi wako pale tutawapanga katika mpango yetu ya affordable housing ili kila mkenya apate nafasi ya kusherehekea ushujaa wa taifa letu la Kenya vile vile nitarudi hapa hivi karibuni kwa mambo yenu ya hospitali mambo yenu ya dam kwa sababu haya ni mambo yako katika mipango yetu We also celebrate Mzee Samuel Kipsoi Nyatich Chepseton. I know you know him. An incredible entrepreneur who exemplifies the bottom up story. A class 3 dropout. He pulled himself up through sheer determination to set up the Kiptimjim group of companies whose interests span various industries and employ thousands of Kenyans before his untimely death recently he was working on West Valley Sugar Company that began milling operations last week fare thee well Mze Samuel Kipsoi Nyatich Chepseton you are a great inspiration to many young Kenyans and many citizens of our country that it is possible to rise up from humble beginnings and make a mark in the Republic of Kenya. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you very much. Na nataka ni wauliza wa Kenya wote. Mahali popote walipo leo. Na ni wahakikishie wa Kenya wa taifa letu la Kenya ya kwamba nia yetu ni kuunganisha wananchi wote wa taifa letu la Kenya na ni wahakikishie wa Kenya kutoka jamii zote kutoka kaunti zote kutoka pembe zote za Kenya ya kwamba hakuna mkenya atabaguliwa na serikali ya Kenya kwa misingi ya kabila dini ama siasa sisi ni ndugu moja wa taifa moja with a common destiny as a people of Kenya na mimi nataka niwahakikishie ya kwamba chukumu letu mbali na kuunganisha wa Kenya ni kuhakikisha ya kwamba tunabadilisha taifa letu kwa miradi na mipango ya maendeleo Nataka ni wahakikishie ya kwamba sote tutaungana tutafanya kazi kwa pamoja na wauliza ndugu zangu wa Kenya kila mmoja wetu ile kazi unafanya ujue ya kwamba hiyo kazi unafanya 
usihesabu ni kazi ndogo usihesabu ni biashara ndogo usihesabu ni mchango mdogo kila mmoja wetu kwa yale yote mnafanya ujue unachangia katika kubadilisha na kupeleka taifa letu la Kenya mbele na tutafanya yale yote yanawezekana kama serikali ya Kenya kuwashika mikono nyinyi mnaofanya bidii mnaoamka mapema kuchangia katika kufanya kazi na kuendesha taifa letu la Kenya mbele nataka niwahakikishie ya kwamba sitarudi nyuma sita fanya chochote ambayo itazuia mkenya mwenzetu kufikia atma yake ama kufikia malengo yake nia ya serikali yetu nia ya serikali ya Kenya mpango ya serikali ya Kenya ni kumuwezesha kila mwananchi awe bora kuliko alivyo sasa muweze kuchangia katika kubadilisha taifa letu la Kenya katika mahali mnafanya kazini ile biashara mnafanya yale yote mnafanya katika sehemu mbalimbali na mimi vile vile nataka niwahakikishie ya kwamba nitahakikisha ya kwamba pesa zenu mnazolipa kwa ushuru kwa jasho lenu pesa zenu ambazo tunakusanya katika kaunti zetu kwa levies kwa taxes na kwa njia zingine zote pesa zenu zitatumika kwa njia inayofaa haitafujwa haitaibiwa wafisadi hawatanyemelea na tayari nimetangaza katika taifa letu la Kenya na mtaona mambo hivi karibuni ya kwamba wale wote wanahusika na kuiba pesa ya wakenya na mambo ya ufisadi na mambo ya ukora mambo yao ni matatu na nyinyi mnajua vile nimesema kwa hivyo i want to guarantee every citizen of the republic of kenya that we will hold your hand as you make your contribution in whatever you are doing in a small way in a big way as a casual worker as a permanent and pensionable worker as a worker on contract as a person making waking up early and sleeping late in driving the wheels of our economy in pushing the destiny of our country in the right direction that you have my support you have the support of the government of Kenya and we are going to work together towards building one united democratic indivisible Kenya na mimi nawauliza jameni tuungane katika kazi hiyo Mungu awabariki sana God bless you and God bless our country Kenya Asanteni sana basi niombe kwa heshima sote